Riding on your parents' coattails at work, and now you're just a slacker, right? No kids either. Why don't you just let go of my child? How on earth did someone like you manage to get married? What kind of dirty tricks did you use? My mother-in-law and sister-in-law never took a liking to me, always throwing snide remarks my way and slandering me without a shred of truth. It was truly exhausting. My name is Karen Williams, 35 years old. My husband, John, is turning 37, and we have been married for seven years. Ever since my father passed away six years ago, we moved to a new home and have been living there with my mother. The three of us together, John is kind, and he's been getting along well with my mother, making our home life peaceful and fulfilling. However, my career has had its ups and downs, causing me considerable stress. After graduating from college, I worked at my father's company, where he was the CEO. But after seriously considering my aptitudes, I decided it wasn't the right fit for me and switched jobs. In the first year of marriage, it was a tough decision at the time, but looking back, I'm glad I made the change. I have two brothers, both of whom joined our father's company. Since my mother also worked there, it seemed only natural that I would too, eventually. The company specialized in electrical engineering, which is why I pursued and completed my degree in that field before joining my father's business. Since my whole family worked in the same place, I never doubted that was where my future lay. When I first started, I faced gossip for sure. Rumors that I only got the job because of my father. It was expected, but still hurtful. Once my colleagues knew I was the CEO's daughter, there was a palpable distance and I felt excluded. No matter how hard I worked, it was always seen as riding on my parents' coattails, which was frustrating. My brothers faced the same talk, but proved themselves through their abilities, so I was determined not to be left behind. I worked hard to prove them all wrong and gradually climbed the ladder of success. My boss, who evaluates our work performance, didn't go easy on me, even though I am the CEO's daughter. It seemed to me he was actually stricter with me than with the average person. This meant that my promotion was purely due to my efforts, and it felt great to be recognized. But even that achievement was tarnished when people said it was because of favoritism, which really got me down. No matter what I did, it was always seen as riding on my parents' coattails, which was so frustrating. Three years after joining the company, I met my husband, and as we grew closer, I became particularly disliked by the female staff. He worked for a firm that did business with my father's company and was well-liked for his competence and personality. His substantial income also made him quite a catch in the eyes of many women. I had met my husband before we sought each other at work. I used to see him often at the bookstore and the library I frequently visit. Since we bumped into each other so much, we got to the point where we'd occasionally chat. We were both surprised when we ended up meeting at work. Our shared love of reading quickly led to a relationship, but this sparked jealousy among my coworkers, leading to gossip. During our relationship, I met my husband's family, but my mother-in-law and sister-in-law disliked me. They'd often make snide remarks when my husband and father-in-law weren't around. You have it easy with a job, thanks to your father, it must be nice living without hardships. They believed I coasted through life on my parents' successes, enjoying a high salary because of them. However, my father would never hire someone without the skills, even if it was his own child. He's a family man and kind-hearted, but business is business with him. At work, he was strict and never mixed business with personal matters. My father doesn't play favorites just because I'm his child. If I didn't have the skills, I wouldn't have been hired. Certainly, I respect my father's capabilities as a CEO, and I hate those who belittle his judgment unreasonably. But when I voice this, my mother-in-law just won't have it. My sister-in-law, too, takes jabs at me for supposedly riding on coattails, and she seems to resent the close relationship I have with my husband. How on earth did someone as plain as you get married? 
What tricks did you pull off? My sister-in-law seems to have an even bigger problem with me because her relationships never last long, and here I am happily married to my husband. My sister-in-law, who dresses impeccably in what looks like high-end fashion, certainly turns heads, but her sharp personality seems to lead to short-lived romances. I later found out that my sister-in-law went to the same college as my brother, and she had once confessed her feelings to him but was turned down. During a family gathering, they recognized each other. When I inquired about my sister-in-law with my brother, who seemed to know her, he told me this story. From my point of view as his sister, my brother, whom I could boast about, is earnest and hardworking. He's also good at showing consideration for others, plus he's into fashion, so I guess that's why he was pretty popular with the ladies. Knowing that such a man was my brother, my sister-in-law seemed to take out her frustration from being rejected by him, becoming harsher in her attitude. So I made it a point to keep my distance when it was just my mother-in-law and sister-in-law. Moreover, when I would go to my in-law's place and have tea, it tasted off as if something had been added. It wasn't apparent by looking at it, but it seemed like my mother-in-law was deliberately serving me unpleasant food as a form of harassment. I thought it might be my imagination, but when I saw her smirking maliciously and ridiculing me when I pointed it out, saying I couldn't appreciate the taste, I knew it was intentional. Both of them always sour or mean when they see me put on a friendly face in front of others, so I've learned to navigate around them to avoid their snide remarks with the food served at my in-laws. I politely eat as little as possible to avoid being rude. If you ask whether I lived happily after marrying my husband, I'd say not quite. Even though my relationship with my husband was good, getting married meant facing more gossip at work. The back talk at work got worse than when we were dating. With the ongoing harassment and sarcasm from my mother-in-law and sister-in-law, I gradually lost my spirit. I found my work rewarding, but the environment was so toxic it made me wonder if this was okay. I found myself contemplating my future more and more. During this time, my father passed away and my brother became the CEO, which led to me being gossiped about as the CEO's sister. Already shocked by my father's death, my spirit was completely broken. I felt I could no longer work at the company, yet I had always imagined I would work at my father's company, and I hadn't thought about what kind of job I might want to do now. Years of being subjected to gossip and sarcastic comments had eroded my self-esteem, and I found myself crying at the drop of a hat. Confused by my unconscious tears and not even understanding what I was sad about, I was truly at a loss. Seeing me like this, my mother and husband were really concerned and took great care of me. Supported by these two, I slowly began to recover and even consulted my mother about the future. I've been thinking about trying a different job, but I don't really have any special skills. Is there anything I can do? I said in a disheartened voice. To my surprise, my mother said, Karen, you've always loved reading and writing stories, haven't you? I think you'd be suited for a job that involves writing. Her words jogged my memory. It was true. I've always been an avid reader and was better at liberal arts subjects in school. I was part of the literature club, enjoyed writing novels and poems, and was active and happy. I still love reading books to this day. So encouraged by my mother, I began to consider a career in writing. Upon reflection, I realized that a career in electrical engineering just wasn't right for me. Ever since I was a student, my mother had always told me to choose a job I loved, but back then, I didn't see it. I guess my mother understood me better than I understood myself, so I decided to make a fresh start and set my sights on becoming a novelist and began working as one. However, being a beginner, it was tough to find work, and I was chipping away at my savings every day. I faced my computer continuously writing. Back in the day, I was driven by the desire to prove others wrong, but now I'm working hard for myself, and despite the challenges, I find it more enjoyable. I spend more hours than I did when I was employed at a company, 
dedicating most of my day to crafting stories. Gradually, my income increased, and by the second year, I was making about as much as an average office worker's salary, though it was less than what I used to earn in the fourth year. One of my novels won an award and even got published. This allowed me to sign a contract with a publishing house, securing a stable flow of work. By the fifth year, thanks to a hit novel, I was earning more than my husband, who has a pretty hefty salary. From then on, my work was getting adapted into comics and dramas, keeping me busy but ensuring a steady income. It's been tough getting here, but working as a novelist. I feel that my previous jobs weren't a good fit for me, but as much as being a novelist suits me, I wouldn't have gotten this far on my own. I owe a lot to the support of my mother and husband. As for my mother-in-law and sister-in-law, when they heard I became a novelist, they just assumed I wouldn't make it and started making snide remarks, suggesting I was leeching off my husband. After my father-in-law passed. Their comments seem to get even worse. Since I write almost at home, they've taken to calling me a nerd, and because our home is in a high-rise luxury condo, their jealousy makes their remarks even nastier. You're just lazing around at home, living off your husband's earnings, aren't you? Must be nice. Life's easy when you don't have to work for it. They assume my husband is the one who bought our condo and covers all our living expenses. They're convinced I don't contribute financially, especially since I switched careers to become a novelist. However, the condo was actually the inheritance from my father, so my husband has nothing to do with it. Plus, the building has such great amenities that I hardly need to go out, which only strengthens their misconception that I'm a nerd. But I split the living costs with my husband, and even though I've explained this, they still believe that my husband is paying for everything. So they continue to make their comments behind his back, and I just bear it. Although it's definitely stressful, they also make rude comments about how I haven't given birth to a child. This started when I turned thirty, and it's just so tiresome. But now that I'm 35 and still not expecting, I'm starting to get worried myself. I was made to feel uncomfortable by two people, and despite explaining work matters to them repeatedly, they wouldn't listen and would just insult me. So I slyly sought advice from my mother and husband. When I was working at the company, I didn't consult anyone until I reached my breaking point. So learning from that, I decided to talk to them early on. But aside from my mother, since the two are part of my husband's family and act like decent people in front of him, I made sure to convey things to him in the gentlest terms possible. You don't have to deal with those two. I'll handle any meetings or communications with them. He knew about the period when I was emotionally unstable due to the backbiting, and out of concern, he tried to ensure I wouldn't have to see them more than necessary. Thanks to him, the occasions of being subjected to their snide remarks lessened, but there were still times when their malice got to me and brought me down. However, the thought that I have allies in my mother and husband quickly helps me bounce back. As for not being able to have children, my mother, who had me at an older age, assured me there was no need to rush. It's just not the right time yet. I had you later in my life, so there's no reason to worry. Do you think so? All right, I won't stress about it too much, and I'll just wait patiently. Talking with my mother, considering my current workload and the negativity from those two, I thought I couldn't afford to have children now. So even though I felt rushed, I decided not to worry about it as much as possible. I still got snide remarks from the two of them, but my mental state was more stable than when I was working at the company. The house my father left us was well designed and well located, so I lived peacefully with my mother and husband and felt happy. Plus, with the gym, equipment, and workspace in the shared facilities, I could exercise and take breaks during work, which helped me get by smoothly. However, one day my mother, who had been working energetically, suddenly collapsed and passed away from a stroke. She had gone to work as usual that day, and I had sent her off with a smile. She had no chronic illnesses, and I thought she would live much longer. So I was stunned when I found out. 
By the time I got to the hospital, my mother had already passed away. I stared at her, who looked as if just fallen asleep with disbelief. It didn't seem real, but as I arranged for her funeral, my feelings finally settled down, and I quietly cried. I can't believe she's gone so suddenly. She was fine just this morning. My husband, knowing how lively my mother was in the morning, cried with disbelief. He had a close and long relationship with her, so he was mourning as well. While we were sad, we prepared for the wake and funeral and manned the reception. Seeing acquaintances come by and mourn, I realized how loved my mother was and felt consoled. My mother-in-law and sister-in-law came, and perhaps because they were with my husband, they acted somberly. But when my husband was busy with other people, they whispered to me, with your mother gone, it's going to be tough from here on out. And since we're family, we don't need condolence money, right? I was appalled by their insensitivity at such a time. They were stingy about the condolence money and even mocked me, saying I had been too dependent on my mother for my age. I was still in a state of shock and numbness after my mother's sudden passing, but I couldn't help but feel angry at the insensitivity of those two. Before I could respond, my husband came over, and the two of them quickly pretended to be sad and left. I was astonished at their audacity, but I decided to focus on mourning my mother rather than dwelling on their rudeness. Even after the funeral was over and I was back home, I was still overwhelmed with grief and felt listless. I sat down on the couch, still in a daze. During the funeral preparations and the service itself, I was kept busy enough to somewhat distract from the sorrow. But once home, the memories of my mother came flooding back. Thinking of how vibrant she had been made me even more sorrowful, and the sense of loss was overwhelming. My eyes and nose were sore from all the crying, but being back home made me realize just how recently she was still alive. Despite thinking I had cried all my tears at the funeral, I found myself tearing up again. I was deep in my grief, but a rational part of my mind knew that I couldn't afford to stay this way. I had a lot of manuscripts to write by a deadline. With the funeral and everything, I had already made arrangements with the publishing house, and I knew I couldn't take advantage of their understanding any longer. My mother supported my career, so in her honor, I tried to calm my grief and resolved to get back to normal starting tomorrow. While I was doing this, I got a call from the front desk, saying there was someone at the door claiming to know me. My husband inquired further and found out it was my mother-in-law and sister-in-law. I wondered what they could want since we had just seen each other at the funeral. I didn't feel like seeing them, but in hopes of a distraction from my sadness, I washed my face and decided to go down with my husband. As we descended to the first floor entrance, puzzled by their visit, we were greeted before we could even speak. They said with a smile, we're going to be living in your house from today, so show us around, please. And since this is our home now, you, a stranger, need to leave right away. We were stunned by their words, unable to comprehend. As we stood there, agape, they demanded we hurry up and show them around the house. I didn't understand what was happening, but to get to the bottom of things, my husband suggested we head to a nearby store to talk it out. He was worried about showing them around the house right away. Rather than that, they insisted, hurry up and show us around the house. It's ours from today on. Yes, hurry up. Apparently unsatisfied with the idea of discussing the matter anywhere but the house, the commotion began to attract the attention of other residents at the entrance who started to wonder what was going on. Let's not cause a scene first. Please explain why you suddenly decided to live here. My husband explained that we couldn't just give them the house because my mother's estate hadn't been settled yet. Somehow, my husband managed to persuade them to go to a nearby diner. After ordering drinks, we listened to their story, and the sheer absurdity of it all made my previous sorrow vanish in an instant. That house belongs to John, doesn't it? Your mother was paying for it, but now that she's gone, rather than supporting a nerd, we might as well live there together. 
You should divorce that nur you're supporting and come live with us. They seemed pretty smug about it, claiming it was a good idea. They were under the impression that the high-rise condo belonged to my husband, and since my mother passed away, they demanded that we live together. Huh? What are you talking about? My husband was bewildered by their absurd claims, which they made as if they were the most natural thing in the world. It seemed he was getting angry, especially with the insults hurled at me, but he calmly started to clear up their misunderstanding. First off, that condo is Karen's, inherited from her father, not mine, and Karen's not unemployed, she has a job. I explained that I was the owner of the condo, which was part of my father's legacy, and that I was working as a best-selling novelist. However, they wouldn't accept it. A novelist? That's hardly a stable income. There's no need to defend her just because she's your wife, right? Defending her like that, are you brainwashed or something? You'd better divorce her quickly. I even mentioned my works that were already popular in the media, but they laughed it off, calling it a lie. What kind of upbringing allows someone to speak like that? Didn't your mother teach you anything? You'd be better off not telling such lies. Being ridiculed about my mother and the work I've poured my heart into, I was truly getting steamed. I'd been patient until now, but decided it was high time to speak up. Just as I was about to open my mouth, my husband, who'd been irritably explaining to the two unlistening people, lost his cool before I did and burst out in anger. Enough already. Stop talking nonsense. Don't you ever mock Karen. The two were taken aback by my husband's rare show of fury. We've explained it time and again. How many times do I need to say it for you to get it? Karen isn't half-heartedly pursuing her writing career. With my husband's outburst, it seemed they finally began to realize that everything we had been explaining was the truth, and confusion set in. Okay, I get it. We're sorry. Let's live together then. I've already told my friends I'm moving into the high-rise condo. It's going to be embarrassing if I don't, so let us move in. Still, without sincere regret or sorry attitude about wanting to live with us, didn't change. My husband, growing even angrier, declared, There's no way we're living with you too. Just go back home. He seemed more disappointed than I was that his own family would suggest such a thing. His rejection of them even stronger. Panicked by his words, they began pleading with my husband to let them stay. We're in a bind here. We've already sold our family home and have nowhere to live. It turned out they had sold their house without telling us, assuming they could move into ours. They were already arranging to move and hadn't even looked for another place, starting to make wild claims out of desperation. So it's okay for you if your family's left high and dry, just let us stay with you. I quit my job thinking I was going to live in the condo. Their faces turned pale as they desperately implored my husband to let them stay in our house. My sister-in-law quit her job, it seems, and after constantly mocking me for being a nerd, it's pretty clear she was fully intent on leeching off my husband herself, and it's just plain rude, family or not, to show up unannounced like that. From the barrage of complaints to my husband, it was obvious they pegged me as the villain, imagining themselves as the heroes and saving my husband from me. That's why they thought it'd be a great idea to show up out of the blue, convinced my husband to kick me out and then move in together, thinking he'd be thrilled about it. We'll take care of everything at home so it's all good, right? We'd like to get a little something for doing the chores if that's okay. They claimed they'll do the housework, but also have the nerve to ask for an allowance. I was utterly taken aback by their shameless attitude. I was angry at them, sure, but more than that, I began to think getting mad at them was just a waste of energy. My husband started getting even angrier with their audacious behavior. If you're going to sell a family home, why wouldn't you say a word to me about it? It's your doing, so if there's no house, that's not my problem. He flat out refused, and when they realized they couldn't persuade him, they had the gall to ask me to do it. Hey, Karen, could you please talk John into letting us stay? 
We won't tell you to leave, and it's fine if you live with us. If things stay as they are, we're out of options. Please convince him. After all the ridicule toward me, what arrogance they had. It's my house in my name, yet they act so high and mighty. I've always detested the idea, but if I ever lived with them, I'd surely be tormented. Before I could sarcastically refuse, my husband burst out again, exploding with anger. Enough is enough. After all the crap you've given Karen, you've got some nerve. Just stop asking for a share of the home sale money and go back where you came from. I don't even want to see you two anymore. With that, he made an outright declaration of disownment. Despite their persistent attempts to cling to my husband, we ignored them, settled the bill, and promptly left the restaurant. They still shamelessly showed up at our upscale condo from time to time, unrepentant. After I explained the situation to the building manager, they warned those two knew that if they kept making a racket, the cops would be called and sent them away. But they still showed up, lurking around the front door, badgering my husband to let them move in or to give them financial help. When my husband finally got fed up and threatened to call the police, they stopped coming around. Looks like he was serious about cutting ties. He even went through with the legal steps to disown them. But then they started sending our phones plenty of messages, emails, begging to live with us and asking for money. Messages kept flooding in. I got so fed up with the constant harassment that I immediately blocked their numbers. Turns out their family home was too old and inconveniently located to sell for much, and they were counting on my husband without any savings of their own. So they ended up selling what they could and moved into a cheap, rundown apartment. Finding a job was tough, so they're scraping by with multiple part-time gigs, living a busy life. As for me, well, the good news of a pregnancy came through. Once the relentless messages stopped, I had been worried about not being able to have kids, so this was a real joy. With this happy news of pregnancy, I finally felt a glimmer of hope after a long time. I'm determined to be the kind of mother my child can always feel safe with, just like my mother. And while looking forward to the arrival of my baby, I continue to dedicate myself to my work.